Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to, I believe, the last UN Pathways event of the fall 2010 semester. I'm Jason Scorza. I'm Vice Provost for Global Learning here at Fairleigh Dickinson University, uh, and we are honored to have uh, with us as our guest uh, uh, Ambassador Ghassana uh, from Rwanda, and of course our old friend uh, Ambassador Ahmad Kamal of Pakistan. Before we get into the program, I'd just like to lay out some of the ground rules so everyone knows what to expect. Uh, our program this evening will take the form uh, of a, a discussion uh, between the two ambassadors. Uh, after the discussion, we will open the floor to questions, uh, and two of our student aides will be moving amongst you uh, with a handheld microphone for you to ask your questions. Uh, keep in mind that this evening's uh, event is being videotaped for later uh, web streaming, uh, so don't say anything that you don't want on YouTube. Uh, and I would ask you, <laughs> I would ask you also to turn your cell phones off at this time, uh, so that they don't. Um, uh, interrupt the program. Um, this evening our topic will be Rwanda from tragedy to success. Um, it, it is uh, impossible, I think, for, for us to talk about uh, Rwanda um, without talking about the tragedy of 1994. Uh, it is a blessing that we are able uh, to talk about uh, the new dawn of Rwanda, um, its recent successes, and its hopeful future. Uh, so without future, uh, further introduction, uh, we'll turn it over to Ambassador Kamal. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Ambassador, welcome to Fairleigh Dickinson University. Uh, welcome because most of us here do not know anything about Rwanda. We don't know where it is. We don't know how big it is, what is it, the size of its population. We know only two things about Rwanda. Firstly, that there was a genocide in 1994 because that was part of, of uh, the coverage in the media and it has remained one of the blots on the face of human history. The fact that 800,000 people had their throats slit with machetes in a period of eight weeks is truly unprecedented as an event in history. And then the only other thing that we know about Rwanda is this very odd statistic that Rwanda is number one in the world for the number of women in parliament, well above all other countries. And so let me start not with the genocide, which is bad news, but with the women, which is good news. How did you get all these women to take 51% of the seats in parliament? Is it because you ran out of men? <laughs> or is it that you recognize that women are far tougher than men? And I know that because I'm married to one of them who's made of stainless steel. So, so are your Rwandis women also made of stainless steel? Thank you very much. <laughs> He's a great guy, Kamal, Ambassador Kamal. So sorry, first of all. I promised him to come here many times. I never made it. So um, we'll get even with you today. I feel really so humble to be here today to come and share with you, just to talk with you, to have a dialogue with you. Yes, as friends. Uh, well, why, again, do we have those or those women, if we have men or not? Well, I think that it's very simple. Start at home. Look at what your mother was doing for you. She's the best manager, isn't it? Look at your wife. Look at your daughters at your grandma. I think that, and most spe specifically for Rwanda, when you see what our mothers, our daughters, our grandmothers went through during the genocide, 
And then the way they're trying to overcome such a kind of atrocity, it's something very unique, very unique. I think we men, we think that we are the best, so we are the strongest, we are whatever. I mean, it's the, the intelligent guys and so on. But I think that the women are the best. That's what we very humbly, we, Banya Rwanda, under the leadership of uh, President Kagame, who put that there in front as a priority, saying here, there is no way we can ignore that or we can try to undermine our mothers, our sisters. They are part of our country. Actually, it's even pretending, saying that we have the right to judge them or to say, you are part of our country, you are part of us, and so on, because they are there. It's a fact. And they are really, I mean, rebuilding our country massively, even than all those men. Yes, but you are truly unique in this, because all of us here, each one of us in this room has a mother. Yes. But they have not managed to do what you did, which is to give women 51% 50, of the decision-making process in the country. This is absolutely remarkable. They are 56. Fifty, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, and the speaker is also I, a woman. I always thought that it is because you were short of men and we were willing to export some from Pakistan <laughs> to, to, to Rwanda. But I'm glad to hear that it is only because you recognize the importance of women. That's, that's true. First of all, we really do recognize that. It's uh, something, uh, as you said, unique. Because I think everybody or whoever can come to Rwanda and really learn what they are doing there, it's something tremendous. And uh, as I told you, they went through hurdles. They went through my God, such a kind of tragedy. They were raped, they were, name it, uh, all kind of tragedies. Uh, to see that they really they were the ones who tried to overcome such a kind of situation and rebuild our country, our nation. Wow. Okay, tell us a bit more about Rwanda. Because what is it that makes Rwanda tick? What, what is the DNA of Rwanda like? It's a landlocked country, we know. Yes. But what is the culture? What are the food habits? What is the way of life? What is the religion? What is the tribal structure, if any? Uh, what's it like in Rwanda? Rwanda is just a well, s small country, size-wise, but with great people. Uh, unfortunately for this, Beside this uh, period, this tragedy we got, and uh, well, we believe of the same religions, all of us, and we have the majority are Christians. Over ninety-five percent, I think, they are Christians. We uh, have a very homogeneous society. There is, uh, as people used to say, uh, I mean. When they see Rwanda, this, uh, these Tutsi hotels or whatever, uh, it's it's a country where it's really we speak only one language, the culture we share the same culture, the common culture, and uh, yes, yes, I but uh, uh, it is odd that you say we are one people with one culture because we have seen what happened in 1994. And what happened in 1994 was absolutely unique. 